We're studying the book of Ephesians, and uh, we're going to uh, start into chapter 2 this morning. And if you're very astute, you'll say, oh, but we didn't do the last part of chapter 1. Uh, but uh, don't worry. On Friday evening, we, ask you, we invite you to join us by Zoom, and uh, we're going to go through the last part of uh, chapter 1, Ephesians, which is a prayer. And the key word, the key word you must remember <laughs> from this text is saved. And uh, I hope it's uh, correctly written in Korean and Chinese there. Uh, at any rate, it's a word we use often, I think, in uh, evangelical theology and uh, conversation. Sometimes we say, are you saved? Uh, but, and it's a biblical word. Uh, but do we really know what that means? And could we really explain it to, to somebody else? So the goal of our time together this morning is to really understand this word and uh, to uh, have it written not only in our heads but in our hearts and that it will be a source of praise uh, to God. So uh, we're going to have to ask several questions about this word saved and the text that we will read will answer all of these questions. <laughs> saved from, from what? Uh, saved how? Uh, saved why? Saved to, to what? Saved for what? For what purpose? Uh, and saved so what? What does that change? And I think the, the text will answer all of these questions for us as we go along. We should read it again, just to get it engraved into our, our minds. I could say an introduction, uh, it starts out as for you, and then a little bit further down it talks about us, verse 3, all of us. Uh, the difference between the you and the us in this text is Paul is uh, he's talking to uh, non-Jews and to Jews at the same time. But since he is a Jew, he's, he says us when he's speaking about the Jews, and he says you when he's speaking about non-Jews. And uh, it's one of the big themes we'll find in Ephesians. He's actually wanting to draw these two groups of people together uh, into one group, uh, which is Christ's body. But we'll see that a little later on in chapter 2. Okay, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us. <clears throat> so the first question is, saved from what? And I've taken some... Uh, words out of the text just to answer that question. Saved from the fact that we were dead in our sins. Now, maybe some of you are saying, well, dead, I don't feel dead. Like, you know, if I pinch myself, it hurts. I'm talking, I'm breathing, uh, I'm not dead. I have a question here for the young people, okay? This branch, is it dead or alive? I cut it off the tree this morning. Dead? <laughs> well, yes, I think you're right. 
like if I just if I just leave this on the sidewalk, the green is going to turn to brown or gray, and the leaves will fall off, and it will dry up, and someone will just pick it up and throw it in the fire or the garbage, right? So it's it's dead. But at the same time, if I knew how to do it, I could graft this branch onto another tree, right? And it would live again. Yeah. So I would say it's it's dead or it's dying <laughs> and it could live again. Well this I think it's a good illustration of what Paul is saying here. He's saying physically you are alive, but you are dying, <laughs> and you're even dead spiritually. That is, if we think that we're a branch. Because of our sin, we have been cut off from God. Okay, We've been cut off from the, the sap that should be in our veins, God's life that should be inside us in Christ. Because of our sins, we're cut off from that, each one of us. And so, as far as spiritual things and God is concerned, we are dead and dying. And Christ has come to save us from that. It also, the text also says that we were following the ways of this world and of its ruler. Uh, in Ephesians, uh, if we can talk about the cosmology of Paul, it's a big word. That's his way of, the way he sees the universe. He sees the physical world and its system, and then he sees a spiritual world over the top, which we could call it God's kingdom as well. And... Uh, since our birth, without Christ, we've been following uh, the ways of the world and Satan, who is the ruler of the world. And it's a little bit like culture. Uh, the funny thing about culture is that our culture is invisible to us, but we can see other people's culture. Uh, I'll give you an example of this. I have a friend who was a missionary in Africa, in the country of Chad. And uh, one day a Ch uh, Chadian came by his house and knocked on his door and he let him in and they sat down and they talked for a while and uh, the Chadian started talking about another missionary who lived a little bit further down the way. He said, oh, he's a good, good preacher, he's a good missionary. And then the Ch Chadian says, it's just too bad he's not a Christian. And uh, the, my missionary friend said, he's not a Christian, but he's... Sure, he's a Christian. He, he's a believer. He preaches the word. He said, oh, the Chadian said, oh, no, no, he's not a Christian. Because last week I, I went by his house. I knocked on his door and he opened it. And uh, I wanted to come in and talk. And he said that he was quite busy and that he couldn't, he couldn't let me in just at that time. He said, a Christian would never do something like that. <laughs> because in the African culture, busyness is not important. <laughs> People are important. And so if someone comes to your door, you let them in and you sit down and you talk, even if you have a thousand things to do in the house. See, that was his culture. And I'm not saying it was bad. It's, it sounds like a nice culture to me. <laughs> but uh, each one of us, is in, we don't see things of our own culture because we just grew up in it. And Paul is saying, you grew up in the world, in worldly culture, uh, that was governed by Satan, and we learned worldly ways, that is, ways that don't correspond to God's kingdom and God's values, uh, the values that Byung Jung showed us on the screen a little bit earlier this morning. We, we, were, we were locked into those things. We just grew up with them. And it's not only uh, from the world influencing us and Satan influencing us, it comes from our own nature. That's what the third line says, uh, gratifying the cravings of our own flesh, that is our, our desires, our, our sinfulness, our uh, selfishness. And uh, we were by nature, it is, it, it's also from within, from our heart, we were by nature cut off from God and sinners. This is what uh, Jesus has to come has come to save us from. We were not born directly into God's kingdom. When you there's young people here, you were born into your family. Uh, you received human nature, 
which is a sinful nature, and uh, you received culture from your parents and from the world around you, from the media that you, you look at, uh, you are not automatically a child of God because you were born in a Christian family, okay? You need to be adopted by God into his kingdom. You need to be saved. And I see this for all of our adults as well. Why did God save us? Why did God save us? Was it because we were such nice people? No. Was it because uh, we were doing our very best to please God, so he saved us? No. Was it because we were so lovable, so likable, so cool, so kind, so nice? No, it doesn't say that. <laughs> the text says that God saved us because of something that was in him, not because of something that was in us. It talks about God's character. It talks about God's love. It talks about God's mercy. It talks about God's grace. So uh, salvation comes from God and it comes down to us. It's not something that we build up to get to God. It takes its origin in God. Saved how? How did God go about saving people? Well, it says that God made us alive. How did he do that? Remember the branch? It was cut off, it's dying, it's dead. He took that branch, he took all those who believe, and he grafted them onto Christ, who is the tree, and the life of Christ comes through into the branch and makes it alive again. It says he raised us with Christ. Now, this is a key word in Ephesians. It's either in Christ or with Christ. It depends a little bit on uh, translations. I'm just going to read them to you quickly. Okay, there's several references to this in the first chapter. It's just so that we see the importance. He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. He chose us in him. He predestined us to be his sons through Christ. He has freely given us his grace in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood. God is bringing everything together under Christ. In him he chose us. You were included in Christ. We have been sealed by the Holy Spirit in Christ. A little bit later, he made us alive with Christ. He raised us up with Christ. He seated us with him in the heavenly places. He showed us his kindness in Christ. He created us for good works in Christ Jesus. Do you get the message? I think he's hammering on the same nail all the way through the text. I have a few illustrations of this because it's important. Do you know the story of David and Goliath? Goliath was a big giant and uh, he came to the in front of the army of uh, the people of Israel and he said, send me out one man to fight against me. If he wins, all of my people here, all of our people, we will be your slaves. And if I win, all of you will be our slaves. You remember that? And so everybody's afraid to go out, but there's one man, David, who, who trusts in God. He said, that man's insulting God's people, God's army. Like, I mean, who's... Everybody was looking at the giant. The giant was so huge. Uh, David wasn't looking at the giant. He was looking at God, who's much bigger than the, the giant. And uh, so David goes out there with five stones and he puts one right here and the giant falls over and dies. So what is the result of that? All the Philistines became the slaves of the people of Israel. You see, uh, it was almost as if when David went out to fight, he had a, a, a big backpack on and inside the backpack was all of the people of Israel, right? 
and the, the giant had a backpack on, and in his backpack was all of the Philistines. That story is, is like an illustration of what Jesus did. When Jesus went to the cross, he had a backpack on. And all of us who believe were in the backpack. And so that when Jesus died, we died with him to our sins. And when Jesus rose again, we're still in the backpack, and we rise with him. And when Jesus sat uh, on the throne next to God, we sit with him. This is what this text says, seated with Christ in the heavenly places. I'll just use one other illustration. In France, when you get married, uh, the normal law for marriage is what they call the community of wealth, la communauté des biens. Uh, that means that uh, if my wife is very rich when I married her, well, then I, I, I become very rich with my wife. We have, all the money goes into the same pot, unless you make special arrangements before the, the marriage. When we believe in Christ, you put all your wealth together, okay? <laughs> that is, I bring nothing, and Christ brings all the spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And as ruler of the universe, we are married to Christ. This is what Paul is talking about here. In Christ, we become so rich. In Christ, we are so blessed. In Christ, we are saved. So it is by grace. It is not by works. It is not of ourselves. It's him who does it. Here's another illustration. Do you know, do you know the story of uh, uh, Barabbas? Barabbas. I can't remember how you pronounce it in English. Barabbas. When Jesus was crucified, uh, how many crosses were there? Did it, Three crosses, right? So there was Jesus in the middle, and on the left and on the right, there were two criminals. One of the criminals was mocking Jesus, and the, and the other uh, prayed to Jesus, please remember me. And Jesus said, this day you will be in paradise with me. Okay, let's just imagine now, this isn't written in the Bible, we're just imagining uh, uh, Barabbas, arriving at the gates of heaven, okay? Let's say there's an angel sitting at the gate with uh, big books, and, uh, and uh, the, uh, Barabbas uh, comes up to the door, and the angel says, yes, uh, uh, welcome here. Uh, could you just show me, please, uh, your uh, membership card to the church you belong to? And Barabbas goes like that. Oh, I'm, I'm, oh sorry, I, I wasn't a member of a church. Oh, okay. Uh, well, could you just show me your uh, your baptismal certificate, please? Oh, uh, actually, I was never baptized. So the angel's a little worried, and then he says, "Well, uh, uh, just a minute. I, I'm going to go get my my boss." Okay, he goes to a back room and comes out with the the boss, and the boss says, "Oh, so uh, could you just tell us a little bit about your life, please?" Oh, oh yeah, sure. Uh, uh, my mother was a prostitute, and, and my dad was in prison, and uh, I, I grew up learning how to be a pickpocket, and, uh, and then later on I got into uh, riots and uh, uh, insurrection, and uh, I did kill a few people, uh, and so now the, 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 the chief angel's a little worried too, and I said, and just, can you just remind us how you got here, please? And Barabbas says, well, it was the guy on the cross beside me. He said that today I would be with him. Oh, well, come in, please. Please come in. <laughs> because it's Jesus who lets people into paradise, right? It's not, it's not how good I was. It's grace that saves us. There's somebody here called Grace. What a wonderful first name. <laughs> I hope you understand what grace means. <laughs> So it comes down to faith. Faith means, do you believe these things? Are you trusting in Jesus? Now, when, when the Bible talks about faith, 
it means something very strong. Uh, like, uh, if I said, do you believe in parachutes? Do you believe in parachutes? Put up your hand, like, have you ever seen parachutes? Or, yeah. I, I believe in parachutes. Yeah. So, because I've seen it. I've seen it on TV. I've even seen people falling out of the sky with a parachute. So I can say, I believe in parachutes. But that's different from this. go into an airplane with a parachute on your back, right? And uh, somebody opens the door and says, three, two, one. Do you believe in parachutes now? <laughs> it's not quite the same, right? <laughs> this means I really believe in parachutes. If I jump, I'm trusting in my parachute. And so believing in Jesus means jumping. Okay, it means I... I trust my whole life into the hands of Jesus. And my whole eternity. And I, I, I confess my sins to him. I, I, I say, yes, I was dying. Yes, in my sins I was dying. I was following the ways of the world. I was following my own desires. But I trust you for my salvation. And Jesus does it all. And no angel will bother you <laughs> on your way into heaven. Save to what? God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Remember the backpack. We were with Jesus when he died on the cross. We were with Jesus when he rose. We were with Jesus when he went up into the heavenly realms. Remember, I talked about uh, culture. I said there's the worldly culture. And then there is the culture of the kingdom of God. Uh, we've been raised up with Christ and transferred out of one culture into another culture. I grew up in Canada, speaking English. When I came to France, I had to learn a new language. I had to learn new culture. I had to learn new ways of greeting people and talking to people. Uh, it, 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 it was a, a new way of, of living. When we believe in Christ, we are, tra we are transferred into a new kingdom, into God's kingdom, and there are new values, there are new ways of doing things, beautiful values, that it, it's a process for us to learn. We learn them little by little as we read God's word, as the, his Holy Spirit works in our hearts. I've tried to make a little diagram here. This black line uh, is our physical life, okay? It has a beginning and it has an end. My life began in 1957. That's a long time ago. It's going to end sometime. I don't know when. Maybe soon, maybe in 20, 30 years if I live. Really long time. But it's going to end. But God, by his grace, intervened in my life at one point and showed me my sin, and showed me the cross, and I believed. And at that time, I was already risen with Christ into a new dimension, into a new realm, into a new spiritual existence. And this, this life goes on forever. It never ends. So we can actually say that we already have eternal life, those who believe. And there's kind of a zone in here that's a little bit uh, strange, but I'll talk about it another day. Uh, we call that the already and not yet zone. <laughs> We're already saved, but not yet really physically seeing Jesus being from no more sin and, and all that. But we'll talk about that another day. Saved for what? To what purpose are we saved? The text answers this question too. We are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We saw in the first chapter that God knew us from all eternity. God has made us new, and he's called us to serve him. We are not, uh, remember, some people like to collect things, right? 
I've seen people that like to collect the, the little uh, fev that you find in the in the Galette des Rois, in, the, in that special cake we eat on, in January. And they have hundreds of them or thousands of them, and they put them on a little shelf and they collect dust on the on the shelf. <laughs> That's not what God saved us for. He doesn't collect us just to put us on a shelf. <laughs> he saved us so that we can serve him, so that we can glorify him. And he knows each one of us perfectly, and he has put within each one of us spiritual gifts that we can use to serve him, to glorify him. And he's prepared uh, good works for us to do. So as Christians, we should sort of have little antennas out <laughs> seeking what good works God has prepared in advance for us. And if you haven't thought very much about that, let me give you a, a few uh, areas in which God would be asking us to serve. One of them is towards creation. This is a beautiful creation, and uh, God has put us in this world uh, to serve him in this creation, to, to, uh, to cultivate, to, to keep, to... To learn about this creation, some, some of you here are scientists and you have the privilege of working every day with uh, uh, the marvelous things of God's uh, creation. But some of us also just enjoy doing garden or whatever. Uh, that's, that's one way of, of serving God. But there are other areas, of course, uh, we can think of our families. We have our grandchildren here with us for one week. And this morning, my grandson, who's one year old, uh, woke us up at five o'clock this morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he needed his uh, bottle and he needed his diaper changed and uh, then he wanted to play. And so uh, that was one of the good works that God prepared in advance for me to do today uh, was to, to bless my, my grandson. And uh, as we serve our wives or our husbands and our children uh, we are doing the good works that god uh, prepared in advance for us as we guide our children towards faith in jesus christ uh, we are doing good works that he prepared in advance for us uh, these good works that uh, we should be seeking out uh, they're going to be just around us someplace uh, god has brought all of us here to france today not very many of us were born in France. My wife was born in France. Mireille was born in France. But I don't know if there were many others that were born in France. So God has brought you here by his uh, special plan. And uh, God has good works for you to do here uh, in France. Have you uh, invited your neighbors? Have you uh, been to, to greet them? Maybe God has some special good works for you. And he's brought you to this church. Maybe there's some good works you can do for the Lord here in this church. So we are not saved by our good works. We are saved for our good works. Do you see the difference? Not saved by them, saved for them. So, so what? This is our conclusion. So what? been saved. Well, that means no boasting, no pride. It wasn't through works. It wasn't of myself. It was God that revealed himself to me and God who drew me to him. No boasting. Just praising. Thank you, Lord. I know that if I die today, I will go to meet the Lord Jesus and live with him forever. And it's not because I'm a nice person. It's because the guy on the cross in the middle said, you will be with me in paradise. And then just humbly serving the Lord. Humbly serving the Lord. Let's pray. We thank you, our God. Thank you for your love, for your mercy, for your grace. And thank you that you've brought many of us here to believe. Father, if there are some who have not yet put all their trust in you, who have not uh, 
given all of their lives to you. We pray that you would work in their hearts this morning and uh, bring them to this wonderful knowledge of being saved. And we pray, Father, that you would keep us from any boasting. And we pray that you would help us to praise you with all of our hearts and to serve you with all of our hearts as we seek to thank you for all that you have done for us in Christ Jesus. Amen.